Today, my ex-friend brought over a broken Boston Acoustics VR960 loudspeaker, which is a combination two-channel with a powered subwoofer. Hmm. When plugged in, the LED light glows without a problem. But after plugging in the subwoofer, nothing happens. However, the top speakers still work. which directs our attention to the amplifier board. Now, of course, whenever you're working on something like this, the first step is always to check the fuse, but I would have thought that the LED light wouldn't come on if the fuse was blown out. Visually, it looks just fine, and checking continuity with a multimeter verifies this. We're looking at it from underneath, but what you want to remember is just take the screws that are on the outside. Leave the ones on the inside intact. There's a couple things that could be going on. These caps tend to blow. They don't look visibly blown, but they're your larger filter caps. And there's also the three in the back. Those smaller ones will decide if the audio signal is loud enough that it should engage the subwoofer. Zero it out. And with these being 1000 microfarad 63 volt capacitors, our value should be 0 0.05 or less to ensure that we have a good capacitor. Way over and less than 0.05. That one's still good. The telltale sign of a dying signal capacitor is generally a crackling noise, which after some coaxing, the owner finally admitted. And this one's not great either. All above that 0 0.32 mark. So we'll take those out, replace them with some new ones. It does make me wonder, we got four blown capacitors out. What caused this? Caps are polarized, so I'm gonna mark it on the board which one's negative. Let's gently remove the hot glue with the razor blade. This desoldering gun makes short work of capacitor removal. Now this is the first time I've ever used this desoldering gun and I have to say it does an incredible job. All right, let's solder in those three new signal capacitors. I've started to get in the habit of testing continuity before we put things back together. Which may end up saving time in the long run. Let's install that larger filter capacitor and hot glue it into place as we expect a fair amount of vibration in the area. So remember when I said don't touch these screws on the inside? That's because they affix this board. But I want to show you what it's like to redo some of the Arctic Silver and some of the heat dissipating mechanisms because that might be your problem. After unscrewing the amplifier board, you'll notice two very thin thermal pads. Let's slide them out and clean the old thermal paste using a Q-tip and 91% isopropyl alcohol. So what it's actually doing is using this plate to dissipate heat off of the board. The thermal compound had dried out. Perhaps it wasn't able to offload the heat 
and the board burned up a couple pieces. Then we can reapply a thin coat of high quality arctic silver thermal compound onto the metal back and voltage regulators. Next, let's place more robust thermal pads before screwing the amplifier board back into place. If you do these additional steps, your finished board should resemble something like this. Alright, let's put things back together for testing. We have power. Good sign. I can hear a mild hum on the speakers. Left and right. Feel free to leave me a comment below, and I hope to see you subscribers in the future. Thanks for watching.